as you can see here, I got SNES GT open, and anyway, let me post a link to SNES GT first, because I don't even know who here has SNES GT, so that'll just give us a reference point. This is the emulator that I have up, and I'm going to show you how to boot up certain Satellaview games on it. Anyway, options, settings, you'll notice that SNES GT actually has a BSX settings option. By default, obviously, everything's turned off. Obviously, I will want to click use BSX ROM. Now, when it's asking for the BSX ROM, the ROM it is looking for... I think for reference here, I will refer specifically to No Intro and dig up their DAT for BSX so everyone has a good reference picture for what ROM it's looking for. Uh, let me see. The ROM it's looking for is on a No Intro DAT under the title. Um, let me. Uh, Scroll up a bit. It's under the title BSX Sora Namayo Nusu Marita Machi no Monogatari. Size 1024. It's basically a megabyte. That's a CRC32. The other stuff doesn't matter as much. But basically, this is the BSX ROM that is commonly circulating on the internet. It's been dumped enough times that everyone knows that it's legit. And there's also a copy of it up on the BSL, the homepage. Except that it has a copier header on it, and that can be a different discussion of annoying things altogether. Anyway, for... Making this real quick for me, I just pulled my BSX BIOS out from my SD2 SNES. So I'm just going to click this. These other settings are for fine tuning in case you have problems, basically. Boot from BSX ROM means that games will boot from BSX and you can load them from the menu and whatnot. If you disable it, it'll probably just use, like, BIOS settings for general things, but not actually use the ROM. I'm not sure the entire details about that. Save BSX SRAM, <coughs> SRAM separately is pretty much exactly what it says. The date doesn't really seem to matter so far on anything that I know of. But the time, I will get into that later. I will get into that later, and I will show you some of the neat things you can do on SNES-CT by messing with the clock. So, since people have been asking me what BS Fire Emblem was, I will start by booting that up. As you can see... Well, as you can see, basically. One thing I can do with SNES GT that's pretty neat is manipulate the clock like, say, this. I will set it to 809 and reset the ROM. Oh. Every time I unfocus, it actually pauses, so I need to keep this going. And now the clock is... You see, I actually adjusted the clock the game boots at. Now, let's try 8.55. This would be when the game should be over. I'm not sure. It's not booting. Yeah! 
Sometimes fiddling with the clock can do strange things. Hmm. Okay. Now, now that I booted that up, let me actually dig back in here. Do I have the... Wait. Oh, that's why it's checking. Okay, um... Let's... Aha. Now, BS Tante Club is a really good example of a game that has difficulties booting up on emulators. But, as you can see, since I set the BIOS and whatnot, it boots up here A-OK. -okay. And, as you can see, it's pretty playable in this and SCT. And stuff happens based on the game clock. Now, I will set it to 609 on the game clock and reset it. Now, as you can see, it has a different message, and basically what happened here is because the game clock set later, it's actually skipping portions of the game that keep it in sync. And it's telling me to wait until f 10 minutes 34 seconds, basically. Now, when this happens, you see I'm at a completely different scene from what the actual start of the game is. Let's see how much further this goes up. 6, 19. Let's try this. Twenty two minutes thirty four. Okay, I'm not waiting that long. Let's try six twenty nine. Definitely not waiting that long. It's 39. These go pretty long if you let it, basically. Basically, for whatever reason, some of the games let you join in as late as, like, 15 minutes in, even though by that point the game would be very close to being over. <laughs> 55 is the end time! That's goofy. Anyway, let's try another example. Here's a game I play quite often. Imagine only having f <laughs> As I was saying, imagine only having seven minutes to complete everything because it took you 50 minutes to download the game. And then the screen pops up! Ugh. Well, at least I got a boomerang. Yay! Anyway. There are a few games which will actually, like, give you the boot if you try joining in too late. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I have them quite here. Let me see if Shinon Gashima's one. So...
No, it's not. Is that shit Julian? Now, on SNESCT, you can see this boots, but there is an issue. Watch what happens. Fix it, but. Oh well. Oh. Now, let me do this in slow motion so you just realize what happened there. As you can see, I'm failing to clear the lap. Crash! And that's what 40... It's still showing the first scene, even with the 48 minutes on the clock. That's goofy. Boom! Those garble graphics? That's just how it is. That is the state the ROM is in when you dump it from an item pack in the instance of this BSL. -da. And there's basically nothing. Ugh, nothing I can do about it. A uh, glitch title screen. Garbled graphics. And. Then a crash. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned before, it's from the Hoshi no Kabi, you may know Izumi no Mono Katari soundtrack. And it's one of the many soundtracks I found while searching for Satellavia music. Now, give me a second. Okay. Now, one thing I will show a bit before I... Uh, Azen, did you see most of the games I booted up? Have you ever tried booting them up in ZSAS? Have you ever actually tried booting those games up in ZSAS? Because, off the top of my head, I know that BS Tate Club won't boot in ZSAS. BS Shinoni Gashima won't boot in ZSNES. Radical Dreamers won't play properly in ZSNES. Uh, most of them magazines don't play in ZSNES. I don't think Super Famicom Wars BS Band works on ZSNES. I don't think BS Brigham Power works on ZSNES. Basically, none of these ROMs work on ZSNES. So why would I boot them on ZSNES? You probably played that patch. I know there is a patch of BS Fire Emblem that works on ZSNES. I think there are a few patches for BS Zelda that are like that as well. But most Satellview games don't get patches like that. Like, um, I've never seen any patches to get BS Tante Club working on anything, or BS Shinoni Gashima working on anything. Obviously, no one's dared try touching the Mighty Pockets. Well, that's why I'm here. I'm here to look into the BS stuff and tell you what I know. And I'm telling you that if you want to try playing Satellia stuff, ZSNES is absolutely terrible. I would all, I would go as far as to say that ZSNES is pretty terrible in general, but especially for Satellaview stuff, ZSNES is terrible. Pretty much everything has to be hacked to work on ZSNES, and it's very unfortunate. 